For a setup for printing, you want to organize your workspace. You're going to want two bowls or containers, one of which will be for clean water, tap water, and one will be your squeeze out discharge. And you're going to want to prep, I find it's easier with two sponges and rinse them. If they're dry and hard, just soak them until they're pliable and squeeze them out so it's squeezed but not hard as a rock dry. So we're gonna to wanna to have that. So I have two sponges. This was one big sponge, cut in half, that's fine. And you have your bowls, clean water, dirty water. I'm gonna set those out of the way for a second. That's good. And next up, we are going to do our ink. It's important that your ink is the right consistency and that you have the right amount of ink. We're going to try and print with a brown, this might not be dark enough. I save my ink in tin foil and when it's saved leftovers in a folded piece of tin foil, not crimped and folded on itself, you see how easy that is to pull open. It just two pieces pull open, even though it'll dry and skin a little bit, there's still quite a bit of ink in there. I have an ink knife, clean on the flats and the edges. I have a piece of plexi on my non-skid, just so it doesn't wiggle around all over the place. I have a four inch speedball brayer. These, this will work, it's just fine. I'm going to grab a little bit of ink. We don't use a lot of ink for litho. This is not where we need to slather it. And what I'm gonna do is put out a little bit. That is so much ink, so much more than we need. So I'm gonna close this back up. Now, this is fairly loose. Normally, to stiffen your ink, we would use magnesium carbonate, and if you can get some, that's fine. It's, again, keep it in a labeled container. Don't snort it or anything, but uh, it's fine. If you don't have magnesium carbonate, you can also use your flour to, stiff, to uh, stiffen your ink. Another really workable solution is if you plan ahead and you mix up your ink the night before, this is litho ink, it is oil-based ink, it's fine, just don't eat it, um, is to mix it up in this nice little foil pack, store it, and the night before, put it in your refrigerator and pull it out the next day when you're ready to print and the cold will stiffen up the ink and that will help, all right? So you don't even have to add a modifier. If you are going to add flour or mag, you wanna put some in and I hold the plexi just to make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. And it's like cutting in flour to a dough, only it's your ink, got it? Notice I am not spreading it all over creation. If you're working at home, you wanna to learn to be a little bit neat with your workspaces, right? Again, you can use flour to cut it in. It's not quite as ideal, but it will work. And now it's a lot tackier, it's a lot stiffer. So we're gonna go with that. I'm gonna finish cutting the rest of this in and we're gonna call that a winner. And again, notice, very contained here. All right, let me move this out of the way and this. With your brayer, you always wanna have your brayer sitting like this, not like this. It's always best to have it on its frame. When you lay out your slab, you wanna cut over a small bead of ink. Lay this the width of your brayer, and then you wanna roll this. Now, I don't wanna roll this all over creation. You wanna be contained. You only have a small amount of workspace at home. All right. And you're gonna start out, this is very transparent. There. 
There we go. And that's a little bit thin. So again, I set it on its frame. I'm going to add just a little bit more. Just a little bit. There we go. And when I turn it around, that is so that I'm even left to right. And if you want, because it's four inch, it'll go to a nice little square, you can do that. But look how neat that's and contained that slab is. That's gonna make your life easier. And when you look at how much ink is on your roller, it's not a lot and you are not hearing this <laughs> from way too much ink. Most people, the issue is there's just way too much ink. So you better to start thin and sneak up on it. All right, so now this is ready. And so now I can move this out of the way over here and bring up my plate that I'm going to print from. Uh, I'm gonna slide this over. Now, and I also wanna get my paper ready. You are going to want to have a stack of relatively clean newsprint, though I use mine over and over until it's pretty much used, but make sure it's not wet with ink. You're gonna need a couple of sheets, more than two or three, so give yourself a handful. And I have some thin Asian style. This is Thai Kozo, and I have quite a few sheets here. It's just the thinner papers are easier to print by hand than thicker papers. I have printed with Reeves Heavyweight, and it will work, it's just a little bit more effort. So the thinner papers will work with an easier amount of arm power. And if need be, you would put your T and bar registration marks on the back in pencil. All right, just center mark them if need be. These, we're doing the test play, and I'm not gonna worry too much about it. All right, there we go. So this is now ready, and I have my plate on its own, non-skid. I'm gonna do this. Look at that, a nice, neat workspace. I don't need this or this anymore. These get to get put away. And I have my bowls and I have my sponges. Look at that. I am now going to be ready to go.